Today on Real Life, hope has a name. Ken and Lisa Henderson share how ordinary women are bringing extraordinary hope to unlikely places. On Hard Questions, the pastors wrestle with burnout in the church. And on Real Life Coaching, the importance of rest in becoming a champion for God. Clint Gresham concludes his coaching session on the four pillars of wholeness. That's today on Real Life. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And Terry, what's next? I forgot. The Bible is you. You did not. <laughs> the Bible is your and my guide to abundant yes, life. Uh, I'm your host, Don Black. You can't read that. I'm your host, Don Black, know, and I with know. my uh, beautiful wife, Terry, we got Hello. the two co-hosts in the house today. Hello. The pastors, yes. the pastors, yes. and the pastors, yes. and Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert, Pastor Amy Schaefer. Good day to you. Yeah. Coco, are they Coco? Good Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyhow. I've lost track. Yeah. Yeah. I take Coco like Coco Chanel, Jay. You're maybe not in on that. All right, I'm just going to leave it alone. So <laughs> it speaks for itself on my end. <laughs> I'm not going to talk. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, does it? That was funny. It doesn't really yeah. matter. Well, you, as we, as we uh, wrap up this week, this has been a powerful week. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you've joined us for today's program because it's going to continue. You see, because we're kind of, we're, we're coming into a very high and holy season. Okay. So next week is Holy Week as we get into the celebration of the Passover and what Jesus did on the cross and, 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 and at Calvary yes. and then at, uh, for the resurrection. So we, we kind of, and, and Sunday, this Sunday mm -hmm. is uh, Palm Sunday. Yeah, I'm excited about Palm Sunday. You know, I think all pastors get geared up. Mm -hmm. You know, this is kind of the kickoff mm -hmm. uh, right. for the Holy Week. And I'm so excited about what God's going to say and do, not just in our church, but in churches all over the world. Well, that's well, right. Speaking church, right. of churches, I'm really excited. In our community where we live, a church was offering the community to join in their choir for a cantata. So we're having a community-wide Easter cantata, and we're performing on so Palm Sunday. Oh, Isn't that pretty cool? cool? I think that, that was cool. really awesome. There's about 50 of us throughout the community, and we have only had four rehearsals, and but we're going to get ready to do it. So I, I just think it's, for me, it was an answer to prayer. Yeah. Uh, I want to, I've always liked being in choirs, but church today doesn't really have a lot of choirs anymore. They have praise teams. I'm not a praise team singer, but I'm a choir singer. So this is a what great opportunity. Sing? Alto. Really? Yeah. Oh. She's an alto. 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 Hey, we're in day 14 of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, ask all of you to pull out your book if you have it there handy. And today's about joy. That's right. Remember what we're doing. We're praying for our families. We're praying for our nation. And we're praying for the nation of Israel. As we go through this 21 days, and we we end on Good Friday, so uh, it's 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 coming forward rapidly. I pray the Holy Spirit has encountered you during these uh, these times of prayer and times of fasting, and I'm so glad you're able to join us. Uh, pa Pastor Jay's going to just just give us your give us your thought on joy, brother. Well, I think joy. A lot of people don't understand really what joy is because we look at happiness that that's the product of joy and it's not. Happiness deals with happenings that are going on in your life. But joy is the product of your relationship with Christ. It doesn't need anything on the outside. As a matter of fact, everything can be going wrong in your life and you can still have joy. When we have joy, it's just the product of our relationship with God. Like you said, it's the fruit of the Spirit. And I like to say it like this. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Christ produced by the Spirit of Christ in the believer of Christ. You so go. as you're that's fasting, good. connect yeah, with the Lord and let His joy flow in your life today. That's good, brother. There's a song, Jesus and others and you. Remember that song? No. <laughs> I, think I got the joy, 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 joy no, down in my heart. Wait, so joy. I always like that song, Jesus and others and you. I wish I could have shown you Amy's eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> she usually okay. knows the song. I so. know. I was shocked. I didn't know it. I was I don't panicking. Know that song. It's my age, I well, guess. Remember, remember oh. the joy that's a gift and uh, fruit of the Spirit isn't natural. That's it's right. supernatural. Right. Amen. 
it only comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't have to do with circumstances. That's so that's, right. a, good, that's, that's right. a good word. Uh, we have the pastors in the house today. Yes. Yes. So this is Hard Questions Thursday. So you want to stay tuned because we've got, we've got a doozy of a question. Right. I mean, those, those hard questions can come at you. I know. I'm so glad that we have the pastors in the house. And I'm so glad that they're not afraid to tackle hard questions like, you know, are you burned out in church? I hope, I pray as a pastor that you're not burned out on church. And I also pray that you will love what God loves. And guess what? He is building his church. Let's go over to hard questions and see what the pastors have to say about being burnt out on church. Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together and we take questions from you. You write them in, email them in, or call them in. I'm the moderator of this fine crew, and on today's panel are... <laughs> Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Church in the Mars area. Pete Giacalone, Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center in Mount Washington. Well, before we get into the question, don't we need to just compliment Chris on his attire? <laughs> Broke out the jacket, brother. Hey, I'm still wearing the jeans, though. I'm still wearing the jeans. He's, he's coming up to high church. <laughs> That's the first thing I said to him in the green room this morning. Said, Chris, that coat looks good on you. Listen, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt and it's cold outside and it was clean. I just put the jacket on because I was cold. Well, let's get into the question, pastors. What do you say? to someone who tells you that they are burned out with church? Well, you know, there's, it's a vague question. And I, my, my follow-up would be, why are you burned out? But one of the things, depending on how it goes, I would say, you know, there may be some repentance in order because the only way we can get burned out is if we allow ourselves to go there. And it's because we don't have balance. You know, one of the verses that I like a lot is in uh, uh, Philippians 4, 4 to 5. Um, where it says, let your gentleness be known to all. But if you look at that word in the Greek, the word actually means moderation. It means appropriateness. It means reasonableness. The fact is, is balance. We don't have balance. And when there is no balance, this is something the Lord showed me. When there is no balance, there is inefficiency in your being. Mm. If you want to have a good being, you got to have good balance. You know, there's a sad quote that I heard. I heard that, especially men who are on the board and, and been on the board for a long time, that a uh, a good percentage of them, when they leave the board, usually leave the church. Mm. And, that, and that's, I'm talking about evangelical churches, and that's pretty sad. So, so there's got to be something that in, in the midst of the work, there's got to be God's rest in the midst of the work. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no glory given to God when, when people fall by the wayside or, or people leave the church. So uh, I like this question. And I think that, you know, as we were talking last week, something, there, there's got to be a trust, there's got to be a healing. Yeah. And you know, sometimes we as pastors, we can just drive our people so hard that we forget that, hey, they, they need comforting and shepherding, not authoritative shepherding, but comforting shepherding. Amen. Uh, I'd like to read a verse. Uh, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that yeah. uh, labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy mm -hmm. and my burden is light. And I think that a person that has uh, gotten burned out, uh, that they have taken a yoke upon themselves that's that right. God didn't that's intend good. for yeah, them to right. take. You know, they have good. yoked themselves to something yeah. that's actually yeah. stressing them out or yeah. that's, that's weighing them down. So I, I really think, you know, with uh, all that's yeah. been said here, you know, to add to it, mm -hmm. that you really need to seek, you know, God and, and ask him, you know, Lord, what am I supposed to be yoked to? Because it, you know, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to kind of word. springboard off of what you did. And I thought about the story of Mary and Martha. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And, you know, and how Martha was troubled about this. Yeah. She said she was anxious because mm -hmm. she was anxious about many things. Right. But isn't it amazing that when she talked to Mary, that Mary had chosen the one thing. Yeah. So whenever anxiety, burnout begins to happen, and there's many things that you're burnt out about, word. you usually need to get back to firstly your relationship with Christ. Because one of the things we mentioned too about the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit has the ability to give without expectation of return. Mm -hmm. When you're operating in yourself, yeah, yeah, it becomes, yeah. I'm giving, but I want something back. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can tell you're getting into burnout, yeah. Yeah. yet you're drained the tank too far. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, if I could follow up on what you said, yeah. uh, I remember preaching on that passage one time, and, and one of the translations read, you know, Martha, you are concerned about many plates. 
Yeah. You know, all oh, the serving. Wow. Yeah. But Mary has chosen the best plate. The yeah. King James yeah. Version says cumbered. <laughs> cumbered about. Yeah, yeah, let me follow up with, with all of that. You know, um, in, 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 in Exodus 14, you've got the Israelites coming up and they've got this Red Sea in front of them and they got the Pharaoh behind them. And then they, they just experienced a miracle of God to get there and now they're freaking out. And this is what Moses said. And he doesn't say this in a nice, calm, gentle way. He actually gives it as a rebuke. And he says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Mm. And basically what he's saying is, hey, the Lord, Lord's got this. Sit down and shut up and let it happen. And I think that we've got to realize that God wants us to spend more time with the Lord of the work than the work of the Lord. Ooh, and good. a lot of times that's we good. burn out because we don't have personal yeah. devotion, private right. worship. Right. Yeah. We don't have that. And we need to yeah. get back to the basics. And, and, and burnout actually is a sign of dryness in the spirit. Mm. And Jesus said that uh, when we're connected to the vine, mm -hmm. that the, mm -hmm. the life of the, mm -hmm. the vine, you know, good. comes from the, you know, through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you've yeah. disconnected, when you're not abiding in Christ, that the juices from Christ are not flowing you know, through on. to your body. You guys are good, yeah. man. You guys are hitting it. You know, and also too, I think, and let me go, it's kind of a vague question, but there could be a lot more of that. It yeah. could be an unhealthy, unhealthy church. Yep. Yeah. You could have an unhealthy leader. Yeah. There's a lot of things that could be going yeah. around. You could have imbalance in your life yeah, yeah. or you're not balanced in your life. There could be a lot of different things. So I think sitting at the feet of Jesus yeah. where you start That's so it. you can figure out where things yeah. need to be realigned and where things are You don't want to be motivated out of, out of condemnation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because when you motivate out, it's like you said, it's just going to dry you up. So yeah. I, I think a good pastor will, and, and again, I, I don't mean that in being degrading to anybody else. When a pastor sees somebody is going too long, I used to do that with my staff in my other church. When I saw they were given too many hours, I'd say, hey, listen, don't even come in tomorrow. Yeah. I know where you're at. Get some rest. Because the other thing is, is my question would be, why do you feel like you have to do so much? Yeah. You're not yeah, the answer right, to everybody's right, right, problem. Right, right. You don't need yeah. the position and the recognition. You just need to know that you are honored by God. Yeah. You can slow down and let somebody else do something. This church will exist will if survive. you're not yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Well, those th that's a phenomenal set of answers, pastors, for a, co a very complex question. It is. It's a good question. But a real question. Because in life, if we push the flesh, we're going to weary. Yes. But in life, if we feed the spirit, we're going to glow. We're going to prosper. Mm -hmm. So the more we feed the spirit, Amen. the more we're going to have the yeah. strength Amen. of the spirit. Yeah. Get more the, the more we feed our, our flesh, the more hungry we're going to become because the flesh wow. is consuming. It never gets satisfied. Wow. And so with, with that call, we can't serve God in the flesh. We only can serve God in the spirit. That's where the value that we offer is in the spirit. It's not in the flesh. Now the body gets involved as a, as a conduit, but we have to be motivated and in, equipped and powered by the spirit. We love your questions. Send Amen. them to hardquestions at ctvn.org and or call us right now. Call right now, 888-665-4483. And we'll, you can just tell our prayer partner the question that you have and we'll put it in the queue. We love you. Thank you, pastors. You're welcome. Enjoy it. Always being... Always good being with you guys. Coming up, the New Testament documentary featuring women who are changing the world for Jesus. We'll be right back. Over and over again in scripture, prayer and fasting are seen as keys to unlocking victory in your life. This March, the Cornerstone family is uniting together for 21 days of targeted prayer and fasting until Good Friday. It's not too late to join us. Call today for my free 21 day victory guide with prayer and fasting. Follow along with fellow believers all across the country with daily devotions, fasting guides, and tips for praying effectively. Change your life, God's way, as we pray for our families, our nation, and the nation of Israel. Call now to receive this special guide. The film, Hope Has a Name, I love that features inspiring stories of women who are bringing the love of Jesus around the world. Let's take a look. Hope is uh, contagious.
God's doing something right now in this generation with women to live on purpose, to live with fire. What a powerful, powerful message, you know, especially conveyed through so many women. Ken and Lisa Henderson, they've created this project, and they're here with us today to share. Thank you so much for coming, Ken and Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we welcome you to Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been here with us before? No, sir. Well, we welcome you first time. We got a little tradition for first time guests. Okay. It's very common peaceful. We want, to, <laughs> we want to know about you and your family. Before we talk about the ministry and the work that God's got you involved in, tell us about yourself. Where you're from, children, you know, a little bit of your bio. Uh, we're from Florida. Mm -hmm. I was born in Clearwater, Florida, and I was fortunate enough to marry my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. and I got it right the first time. So, <laughs> so we've been together for 30 some odd years, and uh, uh, been married 35. 35. And uh, so uh, we have three children, and seven grandchildren. Seven grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. We pastor a church in Florida, Salt Life Church. Do you? Yeah. Awesome. In Clearwater? Is that what you said? <laughs> That's where I'm from, but we're at Merritt Island, which is over by Cocoa Beach. Over by Cocoa oh, Beach. Yeah. Well, we're so glad you're here in the snow. Thank Welcome you. to the snow. Yeah, it's <laughs> beautiful. <actually. Yeah. laughs> it is pretty. I am so curious is how this project got started. How did that message of how to convey, how did it all begin for you? Um, our son was in a drug rehab program. He was um, battling drugs and had been for about 16 or 17 years. And we met a little lady there who was ministering on campus. And um, she just we went and sat in her house and watched her just pour out love and hope to hardened addicts and um, gang members and guys with the roughest stories you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, she's ministered to thousands that way, just you know, in her home, just loving on people um, there on campus, and uh, was a foster mom. And it just dropped in her heart that there's women like that around the world that no one knows their name, they don't have a platform, they don't have a 501c3, but they are really impacting the kingdom of darkness for the kingdom of light. And that just dropped in our spirit with the name, Hope Has a Name. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, that was 2012, we just kind of carried that in our spirit till 2016 when the Lord kind of just said, okay, you need to do something with this. Wow. Well, that's a big deal. Yes, sir. I mean, having been in this world of Christian communication for a long time, yeah. had you done anything like this before? We had done some small projects for our church and different things, but we had never done anything on this scale. Just a major, uh, major scale. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, a major accomplishment yeah. to produce a full-length documentary. Yes. And it looks like you traveled. Did you travel the world to, to shoot about it? About fifty thousand miles, seven different countries, oh and four different continents are in the film. Like I think it was uh, you were showcasing. Is it four different women? Is that right in it's, their ministry? It's actually seven. Seven. Seven, seven. seven okay. different women. Yeah. Well, pick one, pick one story, I know it's hard to do, and wow. tell us a little, just a little snapshot on a, on, on a lady or a woman's life that God just has got a hold of. Mm -hmm. well, uh, let me just talk about Amy Lancaster, who's in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, the point of the film is, is, is to highlight the women and where they're at. Some of them are abroad, some of them are at home. Mm -hmm. So the point is, stop for the one that's in front of you and do what you can with what you have. She moved into uh, downtown Jackson, Mississippi, and after a period of time, the FBI shows up on her door, knocks on the door, and says, we want to know what you're doing. She said, what do you mean? We're just representing the love of Christ. And she said, and they told her, said, well, crime has come down 21% yeah. in your area, and we want, to, we want to know how to recreate that. Wow. And so they honored her on a state level and then actually took her to yes, uh, the, the White House yeah. and, and honored her, wow. the FBI honored this That's ministry. Well, what does she yes. do? Uh, she feeds the poor. Yeah. Uh, she clothes those who are naked. She just simply loves people in the name of Christ. Yeah. Um, well, that's amazing. Now, I am familiar with Heidi Baker. Yes. Sure. So you traveled to, was it Mozambique? Correct. Is that right? And you, uh, what, you got to see love in action there as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we document on there, I think, three or four. Three miracles. Three miracles. Um, two deaf ears and blind eyes being opened. Really? Um, of course, most people that know Heidi knows she's amazing. She feeds like 10,000 people a day. 
Um, her ministry is now in like 47 nations yeah. or something. Um, just It's growing all the time. Yeah. We'll get the number wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, I bet. Yeah. I bet. So it's just yeah. really caused a ripple effect because a lot of these women point back to Heidi and say she influenced them or impacted mm -hmm. them to believe they could do something. So. That is so awesome to see women who make an impact yes. and they're also empowering other women yes. to go forward. I, that's, this, is a, this is an exciting film. Thank you. Thank well, you. we do a program here, Terry actually and, and Amy do a program called Women of Valor, which we mm -hmm. attempt to do the same thing on a very small basis, mm -hmm. is, is have people nominate women that have been impacting their yes, lives that's awesome. and then to honor those women in a way that uh, reflects that to the community because awesome. every life counts yes, you know everybody's right. life yes, counts right. not everybody gets to be in the film though right. but every <laughs> life counts so what was your goal i mean you had god god compelled you yes and mm -hmm. it took a few years to get you off neutral and into the drive yeah but what made what what made it go because a lot of people have these visions and dreams but they don't make it they can't get it to go. We had uh, done some time with Reinhard Bunke in the past, and he told us about a film that God challenged him to make. And uh, he said that when he was getting ready to make this, the Lord spoke to him and said, Reinhardt, you weren't my first choice. And then he said, oh, wow. And, and so uh, he says, but Reinhardt, you weren't even my second choice. And so he had this film in him. And God said, and, and Reinhardt told God, said, well, if you'll help me, there won't be a third. Well, we had had the concept for some time in 2012 and sometime around 2016, 16. the Lord spoke to my wife, said, if you don't, I've given this to you, but if you don't do it, I'm gonna give it to somebody else. Really? So yeah. we feel like the message is, Heidi's message is stop for the one, stop for the one in front of you. Take what you have and do something with it. It doesn't have to be major. You don't have to have a 501c3. You don't have to have support from around the world. You don't even have to go abroad. Just look in your neighborhood. There is somebody there that's hurting. And so what we wanna do is encourage people to take what they've got and start giving it away. That's, wow, what a great message. Stop for the one. Yes. Stop yes, for sir. the yes. one. Well, we're so glad that you came and told us about it. Now, how do we get copies? Is this available? It's, we'll it's, show. it's available through DVD um, yeah. or digital download. And they can just go to hopehasanymovie.com and you can place an order there or you know pick it up. Well, we'll, we'll put the website mm -hmm. on our website and put a link. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So mm -hmm. that Thank you can you. find out how, how to do it. Um, yeah, it's a... It's a wonderful. It's a wonderful storytelling. I love storytelling. Mm -hmm. Also, and just let me mention briefly, Perry Stone has endorsed it, and he said, uh, "Come take a look at women who will stop at nothing to share the love of Christ." Yes. And, and and Perry, as you well know, is just he's extraordinary, and yeah. and we were glad to have that endorsement. Oh, he's a great uh, man. Yeah. Nice. He's am, a great man. I do. I'm chomping at the bit to ask this question. Well, go ahead. Okay. How did you know what women to? Oh. Go and seek. The Lord told us when we started, he said, well, I'll lead you to the women. And literally, one woman led to another woman, led to another woman, led to another woman. Really? So as we prepare for the next two that God's placed in our heart, we trust that, that someone's going to come up and say, oh, you know, this woman over here or there. Okay. And God, the Holy Spirit's just going to lead us to them as well. And you went and visited them and you just spent days yes. in their life yes. of what they actually yes. do. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was um, life changing for us. It really impacted our life. I am so sure of that. Is there another thing happening? Is there another one of so, these? Oh, yes. yes. That's yeah. kind of the, yeah, Of course, the Bible says that, that there's faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so we have uh, two more that are, are slated right now. Hope has a name, faith has a name, and love has a name. Mm. We'll so have a trilogy. Refer, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll have a trilogy out of it. Put a, put a, put a trilogy together. <laughs> How's your church feel about it? Uh, they love it, actually. Yeah, they're they're very supportive. Very supportive. Very supportive. Um, yeah. It's good that they do. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and let me mention this too. When you mention churches, we do have a licensing program for churches so that they can actually show this in their church okay. and use it. And we're developing with Perry and, and Dr. Brian Cutshaw, we're developing a curriculum around it for for people to learn from. That's as awesome. Go. What we're, a way to encourage us. We're so glad mm -hmm. you came. Thank you so much. Thank you for telling the story. And uh, we know that you have in your life a woman who's impacted you. And maybe you're one of those women of high impact. Mm -hmm. Remember, contact us for the Women of Valor program and put your name or your friend's name 
in the, it, there's not a, it's not a contest. It's a, it's a selection because there's no losers. It's we're all winners. Again, thank you for coming. You so let's much. go. Let's go see what cities found in the headlines in the news. Wayne State University in Michigan recertified the Christian group InterVarsity. InterVarsity filed a federal lawsuit after the school stripped it of its recognition as a student group. Wayne State revoked it because the group's constitution stated student leaders must share the chapter's faith. The college says after they reviewed the situation and talked with InterVarsity, they decided to reinstate the group. A group of gospel artists came together for a good cause. They helped raise money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital by promoting a t-shirt campaign called This Shirt Saves Lives. Christian artists who took part in include Willie McDowell, Corinne Hawthorne, and Erica Campbell. The campaign benefits children and their families battling cancer. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Don't you love it when people make take media, whether it's a film or whether it's internet or television or whatever, and use it for telling God's story. Okay. Yes, that's what it should be used for, um, the media mountain. You know, if, if we as believers don't take the mountain, don't take the hill, somebody else is going to with their message. And we have a message of inspiration, love, hope, mm -hmm. peace, and we have to really dominate really in all arenas from government to um, you know, music, ev everything. Absolutely. Why do you think it is that we 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 don't see a lot? We're seeing some now. Mm -hmm. You know, over the last few years, we've seen more films come out, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad to see that. Uh, you know, I can only imagine has done such a great oh, job in the box office, mm -hmm. but that we've kind of been slow to the market. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, whether we've just not had mm -hmm. the doors to go through, or just the the power to punch through. Well, it, and the movies today are just really of good quality. I mean, I remember when yeah. I was a younger, I'm talking about my age a lot today, guys, but some You're of the movies were not just really well produced. They were sort yes. of, you know, not that great, but these movies today, this one that we talked about, it's really been well well done. Is that the right way to say well yeah, done? Yeah, no. Okay. Well, well and done. we're seeing a lot of secular people people that aren't saved going to these movies. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm going to see I Can Only Imagine tonight uh, for the first time. Take and uh, that's what I heard. It's supposed to be really good. But you know, right. if you take a look at Jesus, he told stories. He was yeah. constantly telling stories. And so what better way in this generation mm -hmm. than to use media to tell the stories of the yeah. gospel? Absolutely. That's right. And I, I, I do agree with you, Pastor, that uh, parables, to tell a parable is just a story. And he said, remember Jesus said, from now on, I'm only going to speak in parables. Mm -hmm. Remember there was that place yeah. in, there was a paradigm yeah. shift in his public ministry where he didn't teach. He taught privately to his disciples and his followers, but he spoke publicly only in stories because he knew that people who couldn't understand the deeper truths of the teaching could get a hold of the story mm -hmm. and understand the parable, the story. So we, we as Christian communicators need to tell the stories. Amen. And so I'm excited about that opportunity. Pray, pray as the God, God will just lead new people to telling stories. Absolutely. We're, we're going to come back with our coaching in just a minute. We're going to see what the Lord's doing there. I'm glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Hey, Amy. Hi. It's Woman of Valor time. Yes. And we are doing something really great this year, celebrating women all week long. Plus, we're having a great reveal. We want you to send in your nomination for your very special Woman of Valor. Who is a Woman of Valor? She's a woman of strength. She's brave. She's fearless. She's undaunting. Send in your nomination to ctvn.org backslash valor. And this woman has made an impact in your life, your family lives, community, church. We want to give honor to whom honor is due. So we invite you to put in your nomination, send it to us so that we can celebrate her and women of valor all week long. It'll be a great time celebrating women. Welcome to Real Life Coaching. It's our goal to help you become the very best you possible. And then when you're the best you, you can win in life God's way. 
win in life God's way. And in order to do that, you need really deep rest. And we disregard rest. We think it's weakness. But rest isn't about weakness. It's about restoration and renewal. Uh, Clint Gresham is here to wrap up his coaching session on becoming a champion for Christ. So let's go get started with coaching. Clint, it's been great talking with you and having you as a coach to talk about becoming and, and you four pillars to wholeness. Let's, let's recap for those who may be yeah. catching up with ourselves. Yeah. First pillar. Integrity. Integrity. That is ground zero. And the reason that integrity is so important is because it really is the number one grower of self-esteem. And the reason the self-esteem is important is because having a healthy concept, a healthy self-image uh, essentially allows Jesus to die on the cross for us. Because if you don't think that you were worth the blood of Jesus, even though God says that you were, that means that you'll constantly be trying to prove your love and prove your worth to him and to the people around you. And so having integrity and not living with duality in our life, uh, you know, the root of integrity is integer, which is a whole number. Uh, coming from a place of oneness in our life where I don't have two sets of morals. I don't live with duality in my life, but one set. And, uh, and it's aspirational. It's aspirational. It, it is not perfection, but it is a striving to doing the right thing, even if it feels uncomfortable. Second pillar. Bravery. Uh, you know, I've got a friend who is a writer in Hollywood, and he said that one of the number one mechanisms that he uses to get an audience to either love a character or hate a character is the absence or the presence of bravery. And if you think about any story that's ever been told, uh, if you look at a character within those stories, we always love the character that was brave and despise the character who was cowardly. And um, you know, I think about when, when God selected David to be king, and Saul was the king, but Saul was afraid. He was afraid of people. There's one story in particular where it says that King Saul was hiding in the luggage. And because he was a coward, David was exalted to the place of being the king. And uh, the reason that bravery is so revered is because it always risks standing alone. Like all of the people who were brave always did the thing that felt uncomfortable in the moment. They went away from the crowd, which is ingrained into our biology to belong, to be a part of a community. And so to be brave is going against that very core thing of who we are all about. And then we talked about the third pillar. Grit. Yeah, I talked about grit and how that is the number one predictor of success. And uh, it was a huge part of the um, coaching philosophy of the Seattle Seahawks. And um, I think that there are so many people, grit is essentially this inner resoluteness, this dogged perseverance that no matter what happens in my life, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna get back on that horse because I know that this is making me stronger. Mm. And it is the number one predictor of success. And um, I think for so many of us, the script that we have in our mind is one of failure instead of one of showing back up and, and being a fighter and getting back up on it. And so how we develop and grow grit in our life is changing the script inside of our mind to be one of positivity and hope because the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when you go into any situation, you can go with the full assurance that God is for you. He has not forgotten you, that it's not too late, that whatever you put your hand to is going to prosper. And so when we know what God has said about us, that allows us to show back up in all of these areas that try and tear us down. You know, in your NFL career, I'm thinking grit. I'm still sticking mm -hmm. in the grit uh, pillar. You had a lot of opportunities just to quit. <laughs> I suspect because yeah. you were matched up against people who in many cases wanted to hurt you. 
you know. But what in that in just in that in that in that in that in environment, what made you want to stay there? And you were in the, in, in in the league for what six years, I think. Six, six years. Seasons. What made you want to stay there, and take that kind of uh, that kind of I don't want to say punishment, but that kind of physical um, challenges. Yeah, because I knew that, I mean, quitting is a habit. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you quit once, it gets really easy to quit again. And there are not many people who um, have the opportunity to play professional sports. And I, I had the privilege to get to do that. And so if I'm going to be there, I want to make the most out of that situation. I want to learn as much as I can. I want to create as much value as I possibly can to this organization because they obviously had a need and they thought that I could provide um, uh, a relief to that need. So um, I just want to be a good steward of the thing that God has put inside of me. And instead of going and quitting, um, I, I feel like it is our responsibility as believers to be good stewards of the things that God has given us. What, what he's entrusted you with. Exactly. I understand now. Okay, fourth pillar. Fourth pillar is rest. And uh, that is offensive sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not comfortable. And when I say rest, um, that is not the absence of activity. Like sitting around watching Netflix all day, you know, may feel relaxing, but I don't think that that's true rest. I think that true rest is spirit-led activity where you are allowing God to come and nourish these parts of our heart. Mm. And um, I think specifically that this is such an important topic because I saw a statistic recently that said that young people, uh, kids that are in school, are reporting the same level of anxiety that psychiatric patients had and reported in the 1950s, which is absolutely soul crushing to hear that, you know, 60 years ago when they would just remove a section of a patient's brain to take abil their ability to worry away, that is the kind of anxiety that young people are living with day after day after day, just going to school. I mean, we have so much stimulus around us all the time and so many areas to compare ourselves to, and it creates this overwhelming sense of anxiety. And then you attach to that some of the messaging that we hear in the body of Christ, which is be anxious for nothing, which um, sounds great. And that is a command, be anxious for nothing. But what that ends up doing sometimes is it creates the sense of, oh my gosh, I can't have any anxiety because that's a sin. I can't have any fear. And then we try and force that stuff out. And that just ends up creating more anxiety. And so when I talk about rest, I, I want to specifically talk about mental health stuff. Because church is not the magical place where mental health issues do not exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as somebody who has had mental health issues come up in my life, I, I had ADHD as a kid and undiagnosed depression and anxiety disorder. And it always made me feel like there's something wrong with me. Like there's just something wrong with me because it doesn't seem to work for me. And I lived with this sense of anxiety constantly and I couldn't quite get past all of that. And there were so many times where I would just pray and hope that it would just go away and I wouldn't find relief. And I think that there are a lot of people in the body of Christ who it looks really, really admirable to pray a sense of depression away. And if you think about that, it's really because I prayed so hard against it. I think sometimes it takes more humility to accept that man, I need some help with this. And so I personally, I take depression medication. And I think that that takes more humility sometimes because it means that I have prayed and I have prayed and I have believed God for that. I have not seen breakthrough. And now I have to go and look to other areas that God brings healing into our life. And that takes a sense of humility. And like sometimes I feel ashamed about that. I feel like um, I, I wish that it could be different. But the truth is, is that God brings healing in a lot of different ways in our life. That's and right. Um, that's right. Having the humility to accept other areas of healing is hard. Mm -hmm. Well, his path to healing, we know we know his, his healing is guaranteed on the cross. Yeah. And sometimes it's an instantaneous thing. 
But oftentimes it's a process. It kind of goes right in your teaching zone here of becoming. Yeah. We become whole. And, and that, that is a truth that God has lessons for us to learn in the journey. I'm kind of teaching you your own book, but that's the lesson I've learned through yeah. the process yeah. of the physiological, the psychological, and the spiritual. And in and, and, and every area of our lives, that journey is, is, is step by step. And whatever bridges the Lord allows to be built in the journey to get us over the, the, uh, the, 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 the big cliffs is okay with me. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, thankful for that. Absolutely. You know, I'm thankful for that because we know in the end the process is complete. And that's that grit that, yeah. you're, that you're talking about. Now the rest, now, now brother, when you start talking about rest, you're talking about spiritual rest. There's a physical rest component too. America is suffering with a insomnia at record levels, just the in, incapacity to be able to sleep because of all the stress and all the, yeah. the, the, all the cortisol that's pumping through our, that's right. our systems. Uh, what do you say? I mean, the process there is to come to peace. Yeah, um, you know, I mentioned about how anxiety levels are so high. And the thing about trauma, the thing about when a stimulus comes into our environment that makes us fight, flight, or freeze, That's right. all of a sudden all these chemicals get dumped into our brain and trauma actually gets stored inside of our nervous system. Mm -hmm. It actually stays inside of our body and I'll prove it to you. Mm -hmm. If you right now, sitting on your couch, if you reach up and you touch your shoulders and touch your neck muscles, I guarantee they're very tight <laughs> because what happens is when, when something anxious happens and we're not allowed to process that, it gets stuck inside of our nervous system and what ends up happening is that the smallest things end up triggering us. And we ended up like nothing will make us just get blown out of the water. I mean, just the slightest thing will trigger us in such a profound way and because we're all wound up so tight. So to try and rest, I can't rest. Mm -hmm. Like I have no ability to rest because I have all of this uh, trauma and anxiety in my life. And so literally how we do this, I went and I, uh, I did this retreat this one time and they started doing this thing called experiential therapy, which is essentially tapping into these other parts of our brain where you will recreate uh, a, a, a scene from your life mm -hmm. and they'll have somebody there to kind of guide you through this thing and they'll interject truth as you're physically acting this thing out. And so it was kind of this profound moment where all of a sudden I'm acting out this scene from my life and it's this kind of heavy season of my life and I burst into tears. I started crying so, so hard in this moment. And it was almost as if just I tapped back into this moment uh, and it was so real and it was so raw. And by physically doing something, it actually integrated all of these things inside of my nervous system that I had repressed for so, so long. Mm -hmm. And by physically doing something, it actually created that break that allowed me to get a sense of, oh, I feel relaxed, mm -hmm. like I can let this go. Mm -hmm. And so when something happens in your life that is disappointing or you feel hurt or you're not really sure how to process it, to uh, allow yourself to do something physical. That's why I'm really, really big on, on physical training um, because I believe that it's right to honor our bodies, but also it helps us tap into these other spots inside of our brain that can get us stuck. And so uh, to do something physical, I mean, even as simple or as silly as just punching a pillow when you're upset <laughs> and allowing yourself to feel those feelings and to get it out of your system. Cool. Once you get it out of your system, well, then it doesn't stay with you and it doesn't control you and it doesn't keep you from becoming the person God's called you to be. That's good teaching. That's a good word. It's real. It's the real deal. Yeah. Stuff. I love, I love your four pillars and I believe the Lord wants us to have wholeness. And wholeness is what? Define wholeness. Oh, yeah, wholeness, uh, first of all, is aspirational because I think that is so critical because we can get into this perfectionist type of thing, but it's giving up hope for a better past. It's relinquishing control for a perfect future. That's good. And it's choosing joy and courage right here, Hallelujah. right now in this present moment. Would you pray for the 
the people that are watching this this program just pray for that release in their life yeah I'm just gonna invite you to to, to maybe get down on your knees in just a moment of surrender and, and close your eyes and lift up your hands to heaven and just as a moment of, of acknowledging the presence of God that is here and Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would fall on every single person, every single person who is watching this program, mm -hmm. who is finding themselves bound with fear or anxiety or worry Jesus. or doubt, all of these things that come into our life. And God, I pray that you would come and breathe the breath of heaven into their hearts hearts. God, I pray that you would teach us of our identity, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. And when we know who we are, and when we know whose we are, that we can walk out these four pillars of wholeness, of being a people of integrity, having bravery in our life, allowing you to, uh, to, to develop grit inside of us, and then choosing to walk with rest in our lives. Yes, God, we love you and we submit to you and we ask that you would come and develop these things inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you coming. Thank you for being Thank our coach. You. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. This book is called Becoming. And you, you, you get a taste for the heart of what he wants to accomplish with the work that God's given him to do. It's real and it's, uh, it's authentic and it's right from the scripture. So I want to encourage you. We want to give you this book. We want it to be in your world because you're on that process of becoming too, that man, that woman that God has made you to be. Don't give up. Don't give up on the journey. Don't quit. Don't stop. I'd like for you to speed up. Speed up. Paul said that. He said that you run the race to win. Run the race to win. So the book and the DVD, it's an hour in length for the DVD and the book with your best gift to the ministry. And we will use it to, to communicate the love of God to as many people as we can, as quickly as we can, as effectively as we can. Things like coaching and other things that we do at Cornerstone so that we can fulfill our call to take the good news of Jesus out around the world to the glory of God. That's our, that's our purpose and our mission. And that's yours if you're a partner. Well, thank you for being our partner. Because our partners create opportunity. And opportunity presents results. Results like this. So I grew up in what society would call a normal family. Uh, my mom and my dad brother, sister, upper middle class, very involved in my life, played sports, went to church, did the, you know, bi-weekly Bible school sort of thing. So when I was in middle school, that's, that was like the era where I was really trying to find out who I was and where I fit in. It was easier for me to drift with those who were partying and sleeping around, using drugs and alcohol, because they didn't care you know, what background you came from, what you looked like, who you were dating. So I kind of went through the motions, went through high school, kind of just floated my way through there, went to Penn State University for a year. And it was during that year where my life just took a total turn for the worse. It's like when I got to college, I was more attracted to the partying aspect more than I was, you know, really like pounding out the academics, like really doing what most college students do when they go to school. That's to get an education and make something of their lives. I ended up dropping out. When I went home, I had this insane painkiller addiction and I didn't have the means to support that habit. And that's when heroin started creeping its way into society and it was more uh, prevalent, it was cheaper, readily available. It was really natural that you know heroin kind of found its way into my life. So I had done six months in jail, and I had come home, and I mean, not even three days later, I'm using heroin again. I, I broke my family apart, you know, I, and I could see that now, like how my, you know, it damaged my parents' relationship. It was just total mayhem. Like, I totally dismantled the meaning of family. So I, I violated probation, wound up back in prison. I'm on the phone with my mom, and she's like, well, what are you gonna do, Ryan? Like, you've gotta stop. I went into Teen Challenge. You know, obviously I wasn't a Christian, so I didn't have a Christian worldview. Everything that I was living by was being countered by the gospel. So it forced me to really look at myself 
and ask like, well, Ryan, what do you believe? Like, what is motivating you to live life? Because right now, you're living for drugs. You're living for failure after reading the gospel and, you know, with other books and teaching series. And I just got on my knees one night in the chapel and was like, God, please, like, if you're out there, I really need you to reveal yourself to me. I need you to change me because I don't like who I am. I don't like what the old me is or what me at the time is doing to everyone around me. It's like the Holy Spirit just penetrated my heart and it's like I've never been the same. You know, my family's top priority. It's just great seeing the restoration that God's doing and has done because our relationship's like never been better. You know, I embrace that testimony that God gave me. And uh, so I'm psyched to be working here at the Father's Heart Ministries. Now I'm living for something that has meaning, that has value and that God has me in a position where I'm helping other men um, find their purpose and their calling in life. It's like, where's there a better place to be, honestly? I love that. I love the, the, the stories of God's changing lives. Yeah. I just love that. When you hear somebody share their 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 God story. And speaking of which, you know, we've had over 500 people send in their God story on our Share Your God Story campaign. That's awesome. Yeah, that now awesome. now we've got to go cool. through them. And if you're one of them, be, be, be please be patient with us because we've got to go through those. That's a lot. And thank God, hallelujah, that that's a lot. God's doing things all over the place. And we're so glad that we're able to connect with you in that regard. Didn't you like how transparent that Clint got in his final coaching Very session with us. How Very real awesome. that was. Well, you know, I think it's so, I love what he mentioned about mental health. And, uh, you know, I just felt if we were watching it, there's maybe many of you out there that may be struggling with mental health and that, you know, people think that if I have mental health, like depression, that means I'm crazy. I think that's really the stigma. We think like psychiatric ward and things like that. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just a chemical imbalance, you know, and God can heal that, but it's nothing wrong with you. No different than someone has to take insulin or someone has to take something for their cholesterol or something along that line that the body just isn't operating as it should. And we have certain chemicals that need to be produced in order to bring certain levels to where we need to be. And when they're not operating, people feel like well, I can just pray it away. And I had a lady that died and ended up killing herself. I knew because she did not take her mental health meds and she was a phenomenal businesswoman but couldn't put her mind around the reality that she needed those medications to bring herself to a place of normalcy wow. and level. Wow, that's, that's so tough because there's a whole, there is a realm out there of people that believe that they can be delivered and set free from depression instantaneously and they're opposed to medicine. So there has to be some type of a blending. That's right. Um, and that's a fine line to know. As pastors, I'm sure you deal with this pretty regularly well, there's, too. You know, Not I, as depression, but I mean with yeah, yeah, yeah. people that are doing that. There's a sequencing in God's healing process. Mm -hmm. And we don't tell God how to do it. Right. It's totally his business. Jesus on the cross, which is we're getting ready to celebrate that victory. He took all of our diseases and our sicknesses with him on the cross. And by his stripes, the Bible tells us Amen. that we are healed. That's and that right. includes physical healings, mm -hmm. emotional healings, right. relationship healings, mm -hmm. psychological healings. All of that is included. Now you say, well, why are people sick? Why are people have issues? Because there's a process that the Lord uses. Faith has to rise up. And sometimes God will supernaturally, Amen. supernatural. Amen. I believe that we we lay hands on people Amen. and believe with 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 faith that they're going to receive. And many times there's an instantaneous reception. Mm -hmm. But then other times we lay hands with faith, mm -hmm. trusting that it's God. Okay. It's nothing to do with us. It's Amen. all about God, and He will heal. And here's what you're claiming. This is what you need to claim and hold on to. I am healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Don't put the conditions on it. Don't let the symptoms de demonstrate what your faith tells you to believe. And if you need to have medications, doctors put you on medications, that's not a bad thing. Right. That's a process of healing, Amy. The doctors are a gift from God to help us in the healing process. Right. So it's really wrong as believers to say, 
I'm against doctors and medicine and I'll just believe the word. How about believe the word and get the recommendations from the doctors and the medications to get on the healing path. And just like I did with asthma, I mean, I remember struggling for three years breathing, doing that inhaler and I would be done and say, I am the healed of the Lord. The healing power of God is working in me right now. And God did supernaturally heal me, but it was a process. Mm -hmm. I would like instantaneous, but it didn't work like that. Hey, for but we, we, we don't tell God how to do what he does. Right. Sometimes, and we learned this the other day, sometimes God gives us, because of his mercy and his, his vision for us, the uh, privilege to go through the trial. Right. Because through the trial, there is the promise that we're going to attain. So the book's called Becoming. Mm -hmm. And we want to give this book to you. And I just thank Clint, that he was transparent to talk about these personal mm -hmm. issues. A man who played in the NFL, you know, most of the time, us men, we're all, yeah, yeah, everything's okay, you know, we're, we're great. But, and that's just not always right. So we want to give this book to you along with the DVD. It's our gift. Just plant a seed in the ministry here at Cornerstone, your best gift that you can put into the ministry to help us as we reach out. Call the number on the screen. We go to the website and uh, you, you can get this as soon as possible. We'll, we'll pay for the shipping hand and then get it to you as quickly as possible. Uh, I just think there's people watching that you know people who, who are under stress mm -hmm. and right. depression yes. and anxiety yes. and they need to have this message. Yeah. So share the message with them. You don't, have to, you don't have to preach it. Just say, hey, you know, I really like this. This guy played in the NFL. He's got something cool to say. Mm -hmm. And give him the book and let God use it as a, as a tool. And, you know, I know that we're, we know people that are suffering through some emotional and mental health issues. And you might not know what to do as a friend or a loved one. And it says that we're to pray. You know, and so I just encourage all of us to pray. And you know, it says in God's word that if we pray and obey God, we have to leave all the consequences to him. You know, we're not the ones to know how they're gonna be fixed, but we know that God calls us to be praying for those and, and just praying that God will move in their behalf, which he does, however way he chooses to heal. Stretch your hand out with us as we pray for the people who've called in today. Lord God, we thank you that you are yes. our healer, our savior. Thank Lord, you, Lord, you are the one who sent us everything we need, Father God. You provided for us everything we need, Father, is right here inside of us by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move up and rise up in each of these yes. prayer requests, Lord. We thank you for revelations of your truth. Let faith arise, Yes, God. Lord. Let faith arise, yes. Lord, that the enemy will be scattered in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, we love you. You know, sometimes, and I know we just got a little bit of time here, we all, listen, everybody struggles with, a, with these things. The Bible says there's no temptation or test that's not common to man. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It's common to man. So don't let the devil put you in a box and say, you're the only one. No, that's a lie. We all are walking this journey together. I'm so glad we can walk it together on real life. Every day we're here, we'll be here tomorrow as we're going to go into our Science and Wonders program. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.